Hi everyone and welcome to the Better Everyday YouTube channel. My name is Randy. So on the channel for the past months and months, Saturdays have been the Ricky Gervais slash Carl slash Steve days. But as of late, it's been on Mondays because I haven't been able to record um, because I tried to record everything at one time for the week, you know, and my normal day might be Friday, but then it ends up being a Sunday night before I can record. So this will be a Monday posting again. So regardless of whether it's Saturdays or Monday, there will, there should always be something from Ricky and or Carl and or Steve once per week. Um, I just lately am not sticking to my every Saturday um, pattern. So apologies for that. Anyway, I'm excited. It's been a while since I've watched an episode of the Ricky Gervais show the last few weeks. I reacted to a couple of other things with Ricky, uh, like Ricky and Johnny Depp on the Graham Norton show. That was entertaining. So I'm excited to go back to the Ricky Gervais show, but I'm also sad because I'm running out of episodes. Um, anyway, I'm going to stop rambling without further ado. Here we go. No, it's backwards. Hold on. I need to go. It might annoy you guys to go past this, but... My copyright issues ancient, have been please. especially Every year, at, there, five... at that beginning spot. In ancient Greece, every it's year, so 500 people would be selected from that Grecian society, and they would have to sit there that year, and they would propose laws, and everyone else would vote on them. Now, if you're in that position, all right, you're called up, what rules... Only 500 people got to propose laws? So it's better than um, the U.S. We have a few hundred altogether in Congress to represent us. Uh, I don't know how many people were in ancient Greece. Sorry, my brain's just processing that. There could be better system here in the U.S. than the current system because having a couple of people to represent you for your state they don't necessarily represent you, especially if you ask for them to consider, you know, something that's outside of what they're specific to. Then they just, they don't even give you the time of day. Is it, uh, sorry, I'm trying to remember constitutional republic slash democratic republic slash something democracy like the different ways that it can be set but yeah to have 500 people actually that might be better because we only have a couple hundred people and most of them are out of touch with the normal person because most of them are wealthy anyway moving on you have to sit there that day right. and they would propose laws and everyone else would vote on them now if okay. you're in that position all right you're called up what rules and laws are you instigating you might go right i, I want uh I want an egalitarian society. I want freedom for people. I don't okay. want slavery. Yeah, that'd be I good. I don't want any sort of oppression. Greece that'd wasn't so good on list. that. You could say, you know, when I worked at Cordon Bleu, there was times when I thought being treated like a slave here. Mm. You, you weren't, weren't though, because you were being paid and, and you were slave. free. So. Yeah, it was voluntary. I wasn't free. I was on light from, from nine till six. Yeah, you had the choice to leave the job. Slaves didn't have a choice to leave. I didn't have a choice. Yeah. Yeah, you did, the only yeah. other choice was Tesco, and they'd already turned me down. No, that's not. That's not. That <laughs> wasn't had no choice. That, that's wasn't, why, the, that yeah. wasn't the lack of choice given to most but the slaves. slaves. The slaves who built the pyramids, that wasn't an option for them. It wasn't like yeah. they could go, well, I, I can get a better gig on the Sphinx. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying. No, you're not saying anything. You're saying absolute drivel again. Um, yeah. Here's a little Greek <laughs> proverb for you. A society grows great when old men plant trees whose shade they know they shall never sit in. What do you think of that? Do you understand? Yeah. Just saying, uh, yeah. they're planting a seed, they grow a tree, but the trees take ages. Yeah. It takes a long time. Yeah. That old fella's not going to get any joy out of that. Right. But if he's lucky, yeah. the fella next door might have done the same years ago. So it's all about sort of planting a seed, looking after each other. That's yeah. great, actually. It's not, I don't think it's mm. directly it's what almost, it means. It's almost the point. Yeah. That's yeah. good. Yeah, I, I think he means that future generations. But yeah, if the, if future, yeah, the, if the next door neighbour had done that, then uh, yeah, that works as well. But, that's, yeah. but you seem to agree that that's a good point. Do you agree that seems a good point to you? Um, 
But I'm, I'm sort of guessing he, he enjoyed gardening anyway. Part of the enjoyment mm. was in planting that seed. Oh, we, we it, have... It's the old metaphor problem again, isn't I know, it? Yeah. It's not specifically about trees, but, but, but as a metaphor, what he enjoyed is the fact that he's added to society and yeah. human life and he's got a legacy and all that. Yeah. But so. by the same time, when I went to Ibiza, mm. right, there, they have motorbikes, people where? flying around on them. It just... People don't wear helmets. I pressed a button. And the volume didn't go down, so I'm not really sure. Like, if you press the left button, it rewinds at five seconds. I pressed the left button, it didn't rewind. So I'm not sure what I just did. Also, I went my whole life without knowing about the slavery in Greece. It wasn't until, like, three or four years ago I was reading a book about topics such as that. And I was like, oh. Now I understand how some people were able to just sit around and philosophize all day i don't think philosophize is a word but think all day some of these incredibly uh, just philosophers some of the philosophers that came up with such I, I don't know iconic concepts and whatever the words are but now i understand to some degree where they got all the time to sit around and think because other people were doing things for them. And all that. But so. by the same time, when I went to Ibiza, mm. right? Well, there, they have motorbikes. People just don't know where to them. Mm. People don't wear helmets. You might even get three people on a moped. I saw a farmer with a goat in a basket. <laughs> they don't care. They're whizzing around at high speeds. A lot of deaths there. Yeah. Um, and they'll have a lot of them, them see that those areas where someone's come off been killed people put flowers there yeah yeah they and do that here because that happens a lot it's a lovely green island mm. now here uh, we're saying whoa, whoa, we're whoa, 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 whoa. you're saying what? that all the deaths make it nice because it there's makes flowers. it lovely loads of flowers <laughs> so with death comes beauty so that's another metaphor you can have that one <laughs> That was one of the most now, tortuous things I've ever... That was extraordinary. But look, look at London. That was extraordinary, Carl. <laughs> right, Carl. Yeah. Carl. Well, look so, at London, though. Let me finish point. my point. Let him finish his point. Let him finish his point. I'm intrigued. Yeah. Right, London. Councillor with his clipboard. Need a speed bump here. I saw someone doing 35. Put some traffic lights there and a pedestrian crossing. Mm. Pelican crossing there as well. And a speed camera. Right. Horrible and grey. Okay. No flowers. But you still see flowers left behind where people have died in terrible accidents. They're not you see that all ones. the time. stuck to a lamppost with elastic band round them. <laughs> they don't look nice. He's not in the quality of flowers. Yeah, but the point wow. is this. Is the one this Some 15-year-old got run down and you're disappointed at the quality of the flowers. Look at this, Suzanne. <laughs> Fella lost his head here. Geraniums? So Geraniums for fella lost bloody head. Well, Fucking that's so we have to, we have to encourage that, gun crime so that people will get shot in inner cities and then we can put flowers up and beautify the areas. No, but if an area is nicer to look in, nicer to be in, if it's nicer looking, um, you don't get people speeding around like lunatics. Because they go, I'm not in a rush, I'd quite like to slow down this here and look so at the flowers. This is so complicated. So now what you're saying is, because an area is grey and gloomy, people speed around to get out of it, in the course of doing that, they knock people down. But then flowers are put up, which makes the area beautiful, thus stopping people driving around at speed so death no longer occurs. Well, they're to get out I of think that takes the cake with Carl Theories. Other people on their way to put some flowers down. Yeah. Just sometimes people have to die, don't they? There was a fellow outside our house. We had a lamppost. He had a helmet on. But his head come off. <laughs> you made me laugh at a man's head coming off. <laughs> but, but that's the he thing. Said, he had a, he, he had a, oh God. There's a man, it's the idea of a house. He had a lamppost, he had a helmet on, but his head come off. So yeah. you're saying that because in that one instance, the helmet did not save his life. His head was in great condition. It's just not attached to his body. <laughs> and that's what I'm saying to you. Sometimes people have to die. How far, how far do you take all this stuff of, of, you know, safety gear and slowing down and wear bright clothes at night? And It's just too much. Very important point, you see. Do you think someone should be made to wear a crash helmet? They're only hurting themselves. Uh, crash. I see what Carl, his, I think his base point of, I keep thinking the camera is other places because I keep moving it. I'm trying to find like the sweet spot for where the camera should be. Um, part of it too is lighting because the my room light is right there and so it's shadows. Anyway, I get his base point, I think, 
as sometimes people have to die. Um, like you can only do so much to prevent it, although people are trying to fight, find ways to avoid it, potential AI for, um, you know, infinite life via some form of maintaining our conscious. There's a show called Upload that goes into that, but I heard Elon Musk talking about the other day about AI. That's a hope for AI is to figure out how to keep ourselves alive. Um, well, not me, but I see what he's saying about at some point people have to die and sometimes it's too much because people go out of their way to try to prevent it. Um, in the U.S., they're trying to make aging, con trying to make it officially um, like a condition or an illness, aging, because if they were to categorize it that way, then they would be allowed to, uh, I don't remember exactly what it was, maybe get FDA approval for certain products like a pill that you could take forever to prevent aging and stuff like that, whether their intentions are to actually prevent aging or to make a buttload of money because they would, permanent customers, that, you know, who knows. But um, the the reason I brought up the potential pill for anti-aging was just because of Carl's point, people do a lot, sometimes too much, to try to prevent the ultimate um, end because everybody has to die at some point. Um, so I think that's what he's trying to say. But then he's burying it over, burying it underneath. This guy lost his head on a motorcycle with a helmet on, which I don't, is that true? There have been some bad motorcycle accidents, even where my mom lives there was uh, an SUV or like a suburban kind of thing pulled out in front of a man and his wife they were on a motorcycle going like 50 and this giant vehicle pulled out they didn't look and of course the couple didn't make it but there are plenty of examples like that but I don't know that I've heard of somebody how would that even happen anyway it doesn't matter let's go wear a crash helmet they're only hurting themselves uh crash helmet should they have to wear one i don't think you should get fined for not wearing one well don't forget we're not just protecting him he could be a father with two kids so you're going oh let him up there if he doesn't want to wear a crash helmet let him let him get brain damage is that what you're saying i'm just saying we're we're over the top in this country no, but you, so you're to saying sort of if thing. you're saying no if he doesn't want to wear a crash helmet let him not wear a crash helmet he smacks his head in he's a vegetable He's like that, I'm sitting at home like that. And yet the two little kids come to you. You're in charge, don't forget. We've put you in charge of society here. And they come to you, two little kids, they go, oh, President Pilkington, what? <laughs> why did you let my daddy wear the, why not wear the crash helmet? I didn't, we paid, uh, we put leaflets through the door. We yeah. had adverts on the telly sun showing. Yeah, but, but why? It's your dad's fault. But why wasn't it compulsory? Because he wanted, it's, it's not the world we live in, Sonny. Yeah, he's, now I haven't got a daddy. Has he got an ailment at all? Have you seen he's an ailment knocking about? No, he's, 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 he's a vegetable uh, now. Yeah. yeah, he didn't want to wear a crash helmet, but why didn't you make him wear a crash helmet? It wasn't just him, it was us. Oh, why, did, why did you turn my daddy into a vegetable? Where's your mum? Mum, mum, mum left when... He well, he didn't do it. Not about not wearing a crash helmet, did you? Come I'll on. put you in a home. <laughs> I just think, you see, this is the problem. Wouldn't Everyone's be Carl's fault. He didn't choose not to put it on. Yes, but this is interesting, though, because you, you were particularly callous to that little four-year-old boy. You seemed yeah. so sweet and adorable. <laughs> yeah. But why wasn't he giving this stick to his dad? Well, his, his dad's, dad's dead, a vegetable. He's vegetable. He's dead. Yeah. He's good as dead to him. His dad went within the law. It was not the law to wear a crush helmet anymore because you said, forget it, I don't want a nanny state. I don't want... If you wear a crush helmet or not, he wasn't a responsible parent. He hadn't thought it through. But this is your job. Some people aren't responsible. Society keeps them in tr on track. This was your, You were in charge. You should have made him wear a crash helmet. He had two kids. I actually really like this, this topic to hear both of them discuss because that is a good, whether it's crash helmet or something else, um, potential requirements for people who may choose to be irresponsible and risk their own life should the government then force them to be responsible because that's I don't know it's just a very interesting discussion topic you know?
This was your... You were in charge. You should have made him wear a crash helmet. He had two kids. We've heard from one of the kids. What's the other one's attitude? Is he, is he he's young? Been, he's a bit younger. Is he even younger still? Yeah. President Pilkington. Uh. My brother's <laughs> crying now. She <laughs> shouted at him. I wish you'd have made my daddy wear a crash helmet. Why didn't you make your daddy wear a crash helmet? Yeah. Right? Listen to me, because I'm not in charge of society. They didn't listen to me. Yeah, it seems like a bit of a, a numbnut, to be honest. No, he did listen to you. <laughs> what did he do you made a, a new living? rule saying people don't have right. to wear crash helmets. Right. What, and he listened what, to you. Did he, did he pop shoes on in the morning when he went out? Or did yeah. he need to be here to tell him to do that as well? well? No, there's certain oh, so he has got just... some common sense then. Well, there's nothing. Oh, right, interesting. Yeah. So he can be bothered with his trainers, well, but he can be bothered with helmets. I haven't got a daddy. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Why can't you just put a through saying, hello everyone, yeah. use your common sense? <laughs> yeah. That's all I'm asking. Because, That's what I take Because some people don't have common sense. Some Everyone's people got common are sense. are fucking idiots. Yeah. Well, it's that, not my fault. That's then. why, yeah, that's why there fault. is a government. If we let, if we let people, well, they'd be fucking idiots. That's well, what we've talked about here social responsibility. This is your approach. I wash my hands of the whole affair. Yeah, I don't, I don't like the people who don't wear an helmet. Sort of the doom cells in, and that's cleared them off. That's one problem sorted. So you think you, you're, you're being Darwinian? You're thinking survival of the fittest. The idiots yeah. will suit, but they don't because it, they're not just the victims. The dead person isn't the victim. We've talked about it before. You know, people who smoke know that it's dangerous, <laughs> but why is that still legal? And yet people know that, and they still smoke. Fat people know that they're going to get out of breath and clammy. So where are you going with that, Ricky? I like the tie-in though from the motorcycle helmets to this is the government for example going to ban sugar because some people are irresponsible with it or of course England and the United States are very different on all kinds of things but it brings up good questions like this is heavier than I was expecting as far as the content but should the government ban sugars um, because people who are irresponsible may give themselves permanent health problems. I was big. I was 297 pounds when I graduated high school. Um, I didn't take care of myself. I do now. Um, cigarettes, should they ban cigarettes? Yeah, I'll ban cigarettes. I'm just going to grow them myself. Well, not grow cigarettes, but you know. Um, or should be you leave people alone to make that decision if it's only hurting themselves, like with the motorcycle helmet, it would just be the person on the motorcycle that it would affect. Good questions, big questions. Fat people know that they're gonna get out of breath and clammy, and yet they still eat more. But because that's what I'm saying. Why don't we stop fat people eating? If you've got a smackhead and you really love him, you intervene, you grab him, you put him in a cupboard, you go, you're not coming out. He goes mad for about a year, then he yeah. thanks you for it. Yeah. So block fat people in a cupboard and you just put carrots under the door. What? <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, there's got to be some responsibility. Now, if yeah. it's your own fat kid, stick him in your cupboard. But what I'm saying is, as a counsellor, I'm not spending taxpayers' money on cupboards to put the fat kid in. <laughs> I get that. Obviously, in China, you can only have uh, one child, can't you? Is that something you feel mm. we should bring in here? Uh, yeah, I think we, we've got to... Um, I don't know about one kid. I, I just sort of concentrate on who can have a kid. Okay. As opposed to, you know, if someone's got a load of money and they're good at looking after kids, let Madonna have as many as she wants. Mm. But but it, someone it, who's, oh, who's, yeah, but then... But so then, social engineering you want to yeah, do? Yeah, but then... But hold on, though. Well, what you said then, if you're bringing them into a poor family, what's the point? What good is that for anyone? It's not good for the people who've had the kids. So who's deciding who's allowed to have how many kids? Yeah, Are you deciding? I, I was I was uh, brought into the poor family, wasn't I? Me, yeah. What? I was brought Both into the poor parents. family. Both my parents. I'm talking. I'm talking really poor. So third world. My mum was homeless no. for a while. So. What poorer than that? Poorer than no money at all. I just mean like the people who I've told you about on the estate sometimes who had that one who chased cars and stuff. <laughs> he wasn't happy. They didn't care if he was there or not. What's the point? Right. <laughs> so hang on. So let's imagine so. that Ricky and I, our husband and wife, we've come in, right? What's your <laughs> questions to us to establish whether we were allowed to have a couple of kids? Hello. Hello. Thanks, um, for, thanks for coming. Me and my husband, um, we, we can't have children. Why not? Um, because uh, he's he's got no sperm at all. Okay. He had one sperm and it was it was t ridiculous. It was awful. It just came out like a dead anchovy. Right. And, the, and you're meant to have 300 million tiny ones. And he had one big one. It was horrible. I had to pull it out. It was like a leech. And uh, and also I've uh, it was no I haven't got a vagina, so it was no. You clearly to smooth them. They're like an action man. Yeah. It was just like, I don't know. Uh, but we we love children and um, uh, uh, we wondered if we 
we could um, have a child. What do you do for living? What, what do you do? What's your work? Uh, I'm a rapist. <laughs> <laughs> Right. And I dispose of the bodies. Right. Uh, well, fill out this form. I should have clarified <laughs> a rapist murderer. Uh, yeah. Fill out the form. Yeah. Does it in the wrong order as well, I must yeah. say. So, uh, no, number of times I've disposed of the bodies and I haven't made that one. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Just wondered um, what else you need to know about us. We, because even though that I. That was uh, our little joke, by the way. Yeah, he well, doesn't, he doesn't rape him. I work in an office. In an office um, in he works in an office um, in, the, in, the, in the town. But so, yeah, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a housewife. She's I think a housewife. I'm, I'm making a little nest for when we have uh, we adopt a little a little child. We don't earn a great deal of money, but we're good parents. We're we very think. good parents. How, what's, what's that based on? How, how we well, we're good people. On? You know, mm. I mean, aside from a few naughty jokes, we're God-fearing people. We believe that um, uh, God is watching all of us, and um, we believe in, in the Old Testament. And, and sometimes uh, He tells us to, to kill and rape. Yeah, sometimes He does. Yeah. So we're joking again. We're joking course. again. Or we don't, we, uh, we don't believe in God. We're um, we're a, a firm and atheist and believe that our time on Earth is, is is all we have, and then when we die, we become worms, meat. Right. Uh, well, you filled up. But we've already we've already painted the back bedroom. That's ready for the little child. We painted it black. Because right. um, we we want our child to be a Satanist. Right. Joking right. again. Little joke joking again. We want, little joke. Be, we want him to be an accountant. Right. Yeah. Um, Gay accountant. <laughs> And there's too much in society <laughs> where people are pressured to be heterosexual, so we're, we're going to try and make ours a homosexual. Right, so you filled out the form. Filled out the form. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll pop that in, get it processed. Right. Okay, but what kind of questions are you going to ask us? None, none really. No, it's <laughs> easy. It's just my job. You're happy. You're just happy my with job us. to pass the forms on. We've passed the interview. Because that's the sort of world we live in now. <laughs> oh, oh, God. God. You've obviously heard of the Goodness famous Rosa Parks incident in which um, she was obliged to move on the bus from where she was sat to somewhere yeah. else. And she chose not to and she was arrested for yeah. it. It became yeah. very much a, a sort of figurehead of the civil rights movement. Had you been travelling on that bus, what would you do? Um, and am I far from where I'm, I'm getting off? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so once again, you can't just nip out at the next stop so you can wash your hands of the whole affair. No, you're on that bus, you've still got a number of stops, so you've got to stay on that bus. You've seen this bus driver demanding that she gets up, gives up that seat. Maybe she's given up that seat for you. Uh, I'd probably go, it's all right, I'm, I'm standing, I'm all right. What if Suzanne wasn't allowed to sit with you on buses? What if, what if now a law came in that women were second-class citizens and she can't come with you. Wouldn't you go, no, fuck that, she's sitting with me? I'd say uh, we're only going around the block. We've been to the to the shopping centre. we only 15 minutes. Can you take that bag with you? Cos there's no-one sat next to you down there. I'm a bit crammed in up here. There's more blokes in the bus. <laughs> See you in a minute. Carl, let's put this to... to I mean, obviously, this is too much for your head to... You're on a bus, right, and there's a few white people and they're... I'm the driver. And they're being racist to uh, a black kid. Right, I'd go, if I'm driving, I'd go, this, lads, stop that, will you? If you're going to be racist, can you get off at the next stop and well, do it there? you know, we've all, we've, we've all had a tough day. It's the end of the day, we just all want to go home. We've all been working. Uh, he's not in your way, he's sat in his own seat. Sit back, calm down, have enough. Surely you come... Surely you want to be on the side of right? I'm just doing my job here. I'm sat driving a bus. I'm driving a bus for 30 quid a week here and getting a load of grief okay. off some people right, at the end of the but day. But think bigger than the bus rule. It's not just a bus thing, all right? Just imagine that you're not a bus driver. All right, No, but think that's what bigger. we're talking about here. But, yes, but Ricky's trying to make a point. It's an analogy, again. It's about you taking some kind of responsibility that could you put you in harm's what... way. Yeah. That yeah. could mean that you've got to stand up to danger or to bullies if or to aggression. If, if someone's attacking too... This episode is so, I feel like it's so heavy compared to other episodes as far as the discussion topics. Um, that's a good question. The, their question for, to him about Rosa Parks, what would you have done? I mean, nobody can know exactly what you've done. We can um, guess what we would do based on who we are. Um, some people will just say what they would want to have done in a situation. But the, who we are today is based on our experiences and our interactions and all of this so to you know if one of us was 
there on that bus and had grown up then we wouldn't be exactly the person we are now I would hope that we would be very close um but that's a good question what you have done and today I mean we can easily answer what we would say today I don't know one person that wouldn't have given up a seat I might know one or two anyway uh I saw I if I remember at the end of the video I'll mention it about some bus sort of racially motivated bullying we'll say that I saw on the bus at one of the schools I went to I moved a lot because my dad was in the military one school eh, anyway moving on Ricky's trying to make a point. It's an analogy again. It's about you taking some kind of responsibility that could you put you in harm's what, way. Yeah. That could mean that you've got to stand up to danger yeah. or to bullies. If or someone's to scary if to someone's stand up. attacking Suzanne, she goes, Carl, help. You go, no, he, no, no I could get her here. Because I know the full story here. But this is what I'm saying what about you Rosie. Know the full story here? Rosie, what's it? I'm just saying, she sat on the bus. How did it work? I'll she got on the bus, she sat where she wanted. No, I'll tell you how it worked. It was. Uh, up to the driver's discretion to change where black people could sit depending on the number of white passengers that got on. So she sat in yeah. a seat, so more and more white passengers get on, so this bloke decides, well, no, actually, this is no longer the black section. There is no black section because there's enough white people. You've got to stand up. Yeah. And she decided, no, I'm not going to get up. It's my right to be able to sit on this bus as yeah. a person, as a human being, not whether or black or white. And that was why she got arrested. On a different bus, on a different day, it might not have turned out that way. That's what I'm saying. It might have been, you know, someone else who goes, get off, of, who's, who's been in the right mood. Might have been in the pub all afternoon. And she's there going, I'm not moving, and he's, he's fed up, he's, had, he's up to here with it. Sorry, so she's pissed, pissed up. She's pissed she's up now. No, no, no the person sat next to her. Yeah. Might have even been a black bloke. He's been working hard. And he's like, I don't want this. It's difficult, isn't it? If I was on there, I'd weigh her up. You know, is this woman doing this as, like, a good cause? Or is she just a trouble causer? Because she just seemed like, you know, uh, I'll do what I want. Now, that's fine. You'll always get people who do what they want, and they do change the little rules along the way. But I bet she, when she was doing it, it wasn't like a big stand-up, this is, this is the day I'm going to do it. It's just happened to... She was fed up that day. She didn't want to get up. Lazy. <laughs> she might just go around law-breaking all the time. And she's remembered now because she's, she's made a change about bus seats. But when she got up that morning, did she say, I'm going to do that, or has she been fly-tipping before she got on the bus? <laughs> this is what I'm saying. Is she just, is she just a, a, you no, know... No, she's not a troublemaker. She's someone who already had a burgeoning interest in the civil rights... I mean, I really thought the Rosa Parks incident was pretty cut and dry. It's yeah. the fact that Carl's managed to find an ambiguity in it I is know. extraordinary. I love it. Tell me something else about Rosie Parks. Oh, for God's yeah. sake! I don't know what she's got to do to win you round, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> While I don't think I've ever heard anybody question Rosa Parks' attitude or just these things, I do. Um, I don't know if respect is the right word. We'll go with respect. Respect that Carl is asking questions because that's something, maybe not necessarily on the Rosa Parks incident, but that I do and I think is very important. Whatever it is, ask questions, find out if there's anything missing, so to speak. Um, but I've definitely never heard those questions asked in relation to... Uh, Rosa Parks. Oh, for God's yeah. sake. I don't know what she's got to do to win you round, Carl. <laughs> Honestly, I didn't realise I had to... I didn't realise it would be this difficult. My back um, is hurting so bad. There was bad. a bit of trouble in our yard the other day. Right. Between uh, a wasp and a cricket. <laughs> <laughs> now, the thing is... Is there any point to this at all, or are you just going to tell us you saw? Are you going to the... extrapolate some analogy from this? Uh, I think so. Okay, yeah, well, let's, let's, let's see, let's see, let's okay, see. Okay, well, let's see. Well, so there's a wasp. Yeah, well, so look at old scenario. Wasp, so old scenario. Wasp, right? As, you, as you said, sorry, right. just to clarify, as you said, it was kicking off. No, right, okay. Old scenario. So you're looking I'm out there. of your window. No, I'm, I'm in the kitchen by right. the sink. Yeah. I'm washing up the few plates. Right. The kitchen door's open. Right. Suzanne says, "Oh my God, look at that." What? Is it like a, a, a wasp and a cricket having a wrestle? <laughs> <laughs> I 
I've never seen it before. Right. Wait, right. wait, wait. Are you sure this wasn't Mexican television and it actually was a sporting event? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they're there wrestling. And I was like, well, stop them then. So stop she... Whoa, 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 whoa. You don't interfere with fucking Rosa Parks. Why are you interfering with a hospital <laughs> cricket? Because, one, I didn't even know they didn't get on, to be honest. <laughs> Because I've, I've, they, they were sort of wrestling. I said, and my hands were wet, so I couldn't do anything. I, I always overdo it with the fairy liquid. Yeah. So she's she's there. I say, break, separate them. <laughs> no. So she uses a tea towel, flicks them. Flip, clever. Right. Good right. thinking. The, the wasp goes its own way. The cricket's sort of jumping about a bit. But um, who was fighting it? So who? I'm sort of saying that is really weird because wasps are changing quicker than anything else that I keep my eye on. OK, well, that's just your theory, and it's not based on anything. Well, I told you a couple of years back, I saw one eating chicken. They shouldn't right. be doing it. <laughs> so anyway, so now they're causing like the to cricket. Whoa, how do you know it was the wasp fault? This is prejudice. Why do you think it was the wasp fault? What, what, what if the cricket would have started it? What if the cricket's got a society that go, we hate wasps, we hate their stripes? We hate them. If they come here, fight them. If everyone comes down here, fight them. How do you know it wasn't the cricket that started that? Well, I suppose at that time I didn't, but since... Oh, subsequent information. Oh, come okay, through. sorry. Okay, so anyway... Like Columbo, isn't it? We uh, saw the... yeah. So I saw all that, we broke it up, the cricket was sort of shaking a bit. <laughs> Definitely <laughs> not! Definitely not! It was shaking a little bit. Yeah. So I sort of prodded it, put a little leaf over it, because it was a hot day. Thought I'd put a leaf there so it doesn't get <laughs> overheated. I love I'll this, like it's it. done the marathon. It's got a little, it's got bars on the leaf, written so, on the leaf, and now it's just walking over the little medal. So, Suzanne, we, you know, we leave it for a bit. Leave it? On. What about did you say? half an hour, about, about, about left it for half an hour. What did Suzanne want to do? She wanted to interfere, did she? she wanted, what did she want to do, just sort of like... Um... No, she just sort of said, leave it, stop messing with it. It's probably a little bit knocked out, a little bit stunned. Sure, let's right. get on with our lives, she said. Yeah. So, I put the leaf on it, we go off, and half an hour later, I get back in. I'm gonna. I said I'm gonna go and see the Where'd cricket. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Just for a walk. Watch. So I've been out, back in, have a look. Cricket's still there. Noticed one of its legs gone. Oh. Oh no. Don't know if the wasp did that or the tail flick. <laughs> well, right. This is when I got the computer out. Right. Had a look. What happened is the wasp apparently does this a lot. <laughs> And it stings them in the head. Right, not this particular. If there wasn't a like, little profile of this particular wasp. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Kind of it's just, it's just an incident that just happens a lot happens between wasp, uh, wasps and crickets. Right. right. So it, it stung it in the head, and what happens is it's that whole thing that we talked about before, where it lays an egg. Right. So I was I was sort of having a look, seeing if I could see any sort of holes in its head. What? Uh, and it just kept sort of moving its one leg, like oh I can't get on the list. We've got one big leg. One big leg at the back now. It's normally got two that it uses to jump. So you were worried that crickets aren't aware of the dangers of wasps? I just had a look online and saw that, oh, it's a popular thing that happens. It's sort of like a bit of a mugging. Um, he said you can leave them for about half an hour, they normally come round, and they don't know they've had an egg put in their head. But There's no way it said leave them for half an hour and they come round, they don't have an egg put in their There's no way it said what that. Well, he said they, they normally stunned for about half hour. Have you had an egg put in your head? <laughs> <laughs> like an ostrich egg, by the way, it's coming out the top. So anyway, so I picked it up, I placed it under a little tree, I said, it's in the shade again. Mm, no wasps yeah. can see it there, let's just leave it. Mm. But you've just left that cricket to now die in agony when that mm. maggot goes round his head and comes out a wasp and leaves the carcass. Well, this is when Suzanne came up and said it wasn't moving. I sorted it. You yeah. sorted it? You sorted it. What do you, you, you want to say? What do you mean? Well, I said, what do you mean? You sorted it. She said, oh, Re it's best that I don't tell you. Right, sorry, so, sorry, sorry. But, uh, it, 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 she said she sorted you, it. We, wait, 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 wait. Do you think that we're in the mafia and we're being wiretapped? Say what happened. No, well, she just said she sorted it, and I said, what sorted what? Because I'd forgotten about it at that point. I was painting. And she right. said, the, <laughs> the cricket. Right, what do you think she meant by sorted it? Well, by the look on her face, the way she said it, I've known her for long enough, so I know that she meant it's not good news. Yeah, so what So what happened? So from that, I took for granted she means... <laughs> Say I, it! I've stopped, I've stopped it being... It's no longer in misery. So what do you mean? What? What did she do? I she love the music and the drama. She got a tiny head-shaped stone and... Squashed it, because that's where all the action is, isn't it? 
So she said it was it was too cruel watching it sort of shaking about with its one leg and stuff. Mm. You had to kill it. I imagine I have this vision that one day <laughs> a Suzanne just having to say to his parents, um <laughs> I've sorted it. I've sorted it. Oh, that was a very abrupt end. I wasn't ready for that end at all. I swear, like every time one of these episodes ends, it surprises me, even though I know the end is coming, it still surprises me. I paused that so much. I'm so sorry. I've noticed that most of the time when I get to the end of the video, if I've had thoughts during the video, I don't really remember them and I don't want to have to keep up with a notepad because then I'm not really paying attention. Um, anyway, that was heavy. A lot of the topics to me seemed heavy. Um, uh, yeah. I don't know. I had another thought and then it just, psh, I get where Carl's coming from on pretty much everything he talks about. Some of the stuff he uses within his points or discussion are way out there, but I get, get what he is saying in various things. And I actually really like that he, uh, asked questions in, on not necessarily that because it was on the Rosa Parks thing. That one, that one's pretty settled you know what I mean but another, I like that he had the, um, the impulse or the reaction to consider things that might not be known I really like that I'm gonna stop rambling anyway thank you very much for tuning in and I'll see you next time have a good one